I'm Aarti Krishna and you're watching A to Z of Stock Market Investing. Today let's look at W4 warrants. Arrest warrants for international criminals are often in the news. But if you're an equity investor, there's another kind of warrants that you need to know about which are equity warrants. Recently, HDFC raised 5,300 crores from the stock market by issuing warrants to institutional investors. A few months ago, Kumar Mangalam Birla announced that he'll be hiking his stake in Century Textiles, a Birla Group company, by issuing warrants to group companies. Warrants represent a right but not an obligation to buy shares in a particular company. Basically, a company issues warrants to a certain set of shareholders like promoters or institutional investors and these investors actually get the choice to buy shares in the company at a specified price within a specified period of time. In HDFC's recent warrant issue for instance, institutional investors got the right to buy one HDFC share in exchange for each warrant at a fixed price of rupees 1475 per share. They have 36 months from the date of allotment of warrants to exercise this right. Even if they don't exercise this right, HDFC gets to keep the amount of rupees 14 per warrant that these people have already shelled out to actually get these rights up front. Options also represent a right to buy a share at a future date, but options are actually contracts traded on the stock exchange. Warrants are rights which are issued by a company to a specific set of shareholders that it has already identified. Plus, warrants actually capture a particular exercise price. In the case of options, investors have to ac accept whatever exercise price is available in the market. Well, companies use warrants and promoters actually prefer to use warrants because sometimes warrants can help the promoter group protect its stake in a listed company. In Century Textiles case, Kumaramangalam Birla and his group companies actually hold a 45.2% stake in the company. With the exercise of these warrants, a year later, he will be able to hike his stake to 50.2%. So it gives him a right to protect his stake if there is a threat of takeover or other circumstances like that. The other reason for which companies may issue warrants is to simply raise capital. As we saw in HDFC's case, the company was able to raise over 5,300 crore merely by issuing these warrants to institutional investors. Well, it is to prevent this that SEBI has regulations in place in order to govern the preferential issue of warrants to promoters and others. The rules are that firstly warrant issues have to be approved by the shareholders of a company either in a general meeting or in an EGM. Secondly, promoters or whoever subscribes to the warrants have to pay 10% of the exercise price upfront. Therefore, whether or not they eventually end up subscribing to the shares, the company gets to keep this money. Promoters will be more serious about subscribing to warrants given that they have to cough up this money upfront. Thirdly, the pricing of the warrants is also not left to the company because if you leave it to the company, they may issue warrants at huge discounts to promoters, right? To prevent this, SEBI basically requires the pricing of the warrants or the exercise price for the warrants to be pegged to the stock price history for the last six months. Based on how the stock has traded in the market in the last six months, the promoters are allowed to price the preferential warrants that they are subscribing to. The first thing is warrants basically cause equity dilution because warrants can be converted into equity shares. The equity base of a company will expand at a future date. Therefore, shareholders need to know about upcoming warrant conversions. Warrant conversions affect equity shareholders because they lead to a drop in the EPS of the company. The earnings per share is what determines the company's stock price. Warrants can also change the ownership pattern of a company over time. So if promoters are holding huge rights to subscribe to shares in the future, it shows that in future the promoter stake of the company can go up and your own stake in the company can come down. 
Thirdly, warrants may not be a great thing for equity shareholders in a company because they can be used by promoters to ward off hostile takeover threats. Typically, what does an acquirer do when he wants to buy up a listed company? He could go to the open market and mop up a large number of shares or he could approach large shareholders of the company to buy their shares. Now, when the promoters have a large warrant issue with them and they have this right to subscribe to new shares, they can easily neutralize such attacks by increasing their stake through the warrant route. Therefore, in a company where the promoters hold large warrants, the acquirers may not be very willing to mount hostile takeover attempts. This is actually a loss for public shareholders because then the prospects of getting a good price on takeover or an open offer will be reduced.